Hello and welcome. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and this is the 2020 Ram 1500 Limited equipped with FCA's Eco Diesel 3 liter V6 turbo diesel engine paired of course to the ubiquitous Chrysler ZF 8 speed automatic and four wheel drive. We'll go through a quick rundown of the 2020 Ram 1500 Limited Eco Diesel that is totally a mouthful and I am here for it and we'll talk about what makes this particular truck so well suited for towing in particular. We'll talk about how it relates to other offerings in the Ram 1500 lineup with other drivetrains, and then we'll get on the road with a trailer hooked up to see how it handles. All right, now first up, we're gonna talk about the party piece of this 2020 Ram 1500 Limited, and that is, of course, the Eco Diesel drivetrain. Like I said, this is FCA's corporate small diesel, if you will. This is an Italian design diesel V6 built by a company called VM Motori. This one in particular is in many different FCA products from the Grand Cherokee to the Wrangler that I reviewed earlier this year, and now the Ram 1500. As far as power and torque are concerned, any turbo diesel V6 is not gonna put out a ton of power. They are all about torque. These are torque monsters. But this three liter Eco Diesel puts out 260 horsepower. That's about 20 more than the prior generation. And it puts out 480 pound feet of torque. That is a substantial amount of twist. It is more than you will get with this same drivetrain in the Wrangler that I had earlier this year in which it only puts out 442 pound feet. So. I believe the difference is just in the cooling because there's a bigger grill, they can get more airflow, they can get this diesel pushing a little more torque. And like I said, this goes through the corporate eight-speed automatic, and in this case, it goes to a four-wheel drive system. This Ram 1500 Limited has a four-wheel drive system with automatic four-wheel drive, as well as on-demand modes. Some of the lower Ram trims that also offer the Eco Diesel will not have that automatic mode. Now, I must disclose, I am the owner of a 2016 Ram 1500 with the Hemi V8, and of course, of course, every drivetrain in the Ram lineup has evolved since 2016, but regardless, Hemi V8s are not necessarily known for fuel economy, and that is where the Eco Diesel steps the game up. This engine is rated to produce 22 miles per gallon in the city and 32 miles per gallon on the highway. That is an astonishing figure for a half-ton pickup truck. Now, of course, if you're towing, those numbers will go down. If you're doing a lot of city driving, those numbers will go down. But either way, it is a very good number. You do have to do the math to decide if the Eco Diesel cost is for you. This is a $4,000 option compared to the base Pentastar V6. It is about a $3,000 option compared to either of the Hemi V8s. They offer a naturally aspirated Hemi V8, and then they offer a Hemi V8 with e-torque, which is a very mild hybrid setup. And in either case, the Hemi V8s are technically rated to pull just a little bit more than the Eco Diesel when you put these in most normal configurations of trim and options and equipment. Ram does claim that the trucks equipped with the Eco Diesel V6 are rated to pull over 12,000 pounds. And that may be the case with a certain trim with no options with two wheel drive. However, this is a fully loaded limited. So of course you've only got so much payload all of the other goodies that are on this truck will reduce that payload and thus reduce that towing capacity. The actual towing capacity of this particular truck I'm using is somewhere in the range of 9,700 to 10,000 pounds. So not that magic 12,000 plus number, but frankly, if you're pulling 11 or 12,000 pounds on the regular, you'll want to step up to a bigger chassis than a 1500 series truck can provide. Something more like a Ram 2500 with that Cummins diesel would be another good option if you're consistently pulling weight that is that high and close to the max of this chassis. This is more or less fully loaded. If you go on the Ram build and price website and configure every single option for a limited, this is basically what you're gonna get. The MSRP of this truck is just shy of $75,000. And of course, with that MSRP comes a few other cool toys. These are of course not exclusive to the limited trim, but they're fun to show off. So let's take a look at those. Now one option here that is not new for this model year, but is certainly very interesting is the Ram box. These are lockable storage boxes located on the outside of the truck bed, and they're perfect for items that you want to store for easy access that you don't want in the cab because you will get the cab dirty or you'll get it wet or whatever. You have lockable storage on both sides of the bed, 
And in this case, they work with the proximity key for the rest of the truck. So you just push the button, they open right up. These are plastic line. They've got a drain on either side, front and rear. And on the other side, on the driver's side of the truck bed, the Ram box does have a power outlet. The other interesting thing back here at the rear of the Ram 1500 Limited is the tailgate. Now, some competitors are starting to come up with other clever tailgates. This is something that's going to probably explode in the coming years as every automaker looks for another way to differentiate their truck from the rest. Now, Ram has kept it fairly simple with this one. You can open it much like a regular tailgate. It is nicely damped. You can open it this way from the key fob as well. You just double click a button, it drops right open. Now, the interesting thing here is if this is taking up too much room and you need to access something further in the bed, you can actually open like barn doors. You can open this one. This is the 60 side of the 6040. And then you reach right in here and open the 40 side. So this is nice. It lets you get right up to the bumper of the truck. Like I said, a little bit easier for loading and unloading. It's also worth mentioning back here, Ram does offer a tonneau cover. This is a basic vinyl trifold sort of cover. It is very fiddly to lock and unlock. It does stay shut, but the downside of these vinyl covers is that they're very easy to break into. All you need is a box cutter. You can cut right in to get whatever is stored back in here. The aftermarket does offer a lot of good options for tonneau covers. So if you're looking to keep your bed contents protected, do know this is not your only option. It is a good option, but not a great option. Now, looking back here at the truck bed, this is a pretty typical truck bed. There's not a lot interesting going on back here that the competitors don't also match with things like LED lighting, a lot of tie downs, in this case, a nice cargo management system with this little divider. But the interesting thing that's worth noting, if you like those Ram boxes I showed you, you will lose bed width because you do need all of that volume from the Ram box to go somewhere. So in this case, you basically lose the width that you would gain over the wheel wells pushing out to the very edges of the bed wall. That's not necessarily a bad thing because this bed is still fairly large, but if you're like me and you're looking to get as much as you can in the bed of the truck, that's big, bulky sort of items, in my case, wheels and tires very often, you will probably not want the Ram boxes because you'll lose valuable inches on both sides of the bed that you could be using inside the bed for those big items. All right, so towing with the 2020 Ram 1500 Limited with the Eco Diesel engine. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to pull the two trailers I said I was going to pull. I'm actually only pulling one, but I was able to make it the bigger of the two. So I've got my enclosed trailer with me, which is the 20 foot trailer, aluminum construction, loaded up with car. It weighs about 6,500 pounds. Uh, leaving the parking lot here, got to stop for my Starbs um, on the way to our $1,500 old lady challenge weekend. I've got my challenge car in the trailer and we are ready for a fun weekend. So as far as towing with this thing, this is the limited. So you've got uh, every conceivable option on it really minus the off-road pack and you know, that makes for a very comfortable place to spend a lot of time. And you've also got this Eco Diesel engine, which makes about 260 horsepower and about 480 pound feet of torque. That has a ton of torque for a three liter turbocharged V6. That is just nuts. Um, like I said earlier, it's made by VM Matori. It's an Italian made diesel. Chrysler has worked with VM Matori since the mid 90s or so, from what I recall. And uh, I know our friend over at Jalopnik, David Tracy, actually has a VM Matori diesel in his mid 90s uh, Chrysler Voyager that he's driving over in Germany right now or trying to drive. Anyway, uh, thankfully, this Ram does not have anywhere near the issues that that Voyager has where it doesn't want to run. This runs really, really well. And uh, it's a very smooth drivetrain. It's, it's got some nice acceleration to it. It is all torque. It's really not very powerful. 260 horsepower in a truck this size is not a ton, especially when you compare it to the V8 trucks that make you know 400, give or take. And when it's making all that torque, it's clicking off gears in the eight-speed automatic. Uh, this is you know the corporate Chrysler transmission at this point that's in almost everything. And uh, it's a very good transmission. I, I have an earlier implementation of it in my 2016 Ram, which is powered by the Hemi 5.7 gas engine and uh, really like it. It's certainly a little smoother in this newer truck. 
So we're on the highway here. We're doing 55, 60 miles an hour. How, how does this thing tow? Well, the answer is generally pretty well. It's got plenty of torque. It's got plenty of chassis for the trailer that I'm pulling. Um, this particular Ram is the limited. It's a four by four. It's got all these options on it. So the actual payload and towing capacity is less than what Ram claims on their website. They say you can get one of these things to tow almost 12,000 pounds, but that's if you get a two wheel drive version. I suspect it's if you get a few less options on the limited trim. So mine is rated more like 9,700 to 10,000 pounds. Either way, I'm not pulling anywhere near that with this trailer, it's about 6,500, but um, it's, it's doing a very good job. This is not too much trailer for the chassis, although, I don't know if I'd go much longer, truth be told. You know, my trailer is a 20 foot box, a four foot Vino's, the whole thing's about 27 feet long. I don't know if I would do a 24 or a 28 with a truck like this. And that really applies to any of the half ton trucks on the market. I just don't think it's smart to be putting something too much bigger uh, behind a half ton chassis. But keeping that in mind, you know, these modern half ton trucks tow so well compared to half tons from 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they've got power and torque figures to match older super duty level heavy duty trucks. So that's certainly something worth keeping in mind. Now my limited does have the four corner air suspension, which it's interesting. I also have that on my 2016 gas powered Ram 1500. And in both cases, um, it, it tows really well. There is an interesting procedure to hook the trailer up. You have to tell the truck that you're jacking it up basically, because otherwise it will just try and push the wheels down as you're adding tongue weight on the back of it. And it, it gets itself a little out of whack. You won't ruin anything, but it just makes life a little easier. Anyway, once you've got it all hooked up, um, I am using weight distribution bars. It helps, I think a little bit, but in any case, the air ride will stabilize the rear end for, for load leveling sake. And then once you're in tow haul mode, it will stop the truck from lowering itself down into a little more aerodynamic ride height because you don't want the truck going up and down while you've got something hooked up to the back of it. I have heard from some people who have this current generation of Ram truck who do not have the four corner air suspension. And several people have said they elected to put airbags on the rear. All Ram 1500s are coil sprung. They are not leaf sprung, which contributes to a much better ride quality when you're unloaded. And that is the case, whether you've got coils or airbags. But when you have the coil springs and not the airbags, people are saying that it's hard to get it to ride super well. So a lot of them have added airbags back there, you know, a, a ride right kit or something like that, just to help it out when you're towing. Obviously, when you're not towing anything, you can deflate the bags. It's a little trafficy, and there's people on either side of me right now. And of course, blind spot monitoring is always really, really nice to have whether you're towing or not. Now with the Ram 2500 I had earlier in the year, I was unable to use the blind spot monitors if I had the trailer hooked up. The truck didn't know what to do with it. And I thought it was a little bit of a miss because the Ford trucks, if properly equipped, can do blind spot monitoring with a trailer up to a certain length. Now what's impressive here is that FCA has added that to the Ram 1500 and I do have trailer blind spot monitoring. The killer feature though, compared to the Ford, is that I don't have to tell the truck how big my trailer is. I can set it for the maximum coverage of 39 and a half feet in the infotainment system. If I don't want to do that, I can leave it on auto. And as soon as I hook the trailer up and start driving, the truck will figure out how long the trailer is and tell me in the cluster how long of a distance it is monitoring while I'm driving. And it is accurate here. My trailer, like I said, is 27 feet nose to tail and it's telling me in the cluster it's keeping tabs on 30 feet behind me. The other big thing that's been improved versus my Ram that's a prior generation, which Ram does still sell in a limited quantity as the classic, is the transmission logic in tow haul mode. So there's a tow haul button under the infotainment screen here. And when you push that button, it changes a few things. Like I said, one, it prevents the air suspension from lowering at highway speed. But two, it changes the transmission shift logic a little bit. In theory, that helps you both with acceleration and braking. It will try to engine brake as you go down a hill so you can save your service brakes. Now in my older Ram, it works on the upshifts, the downshifts and the engine braking really, the logic isn't quite there. On this truck, it is really, really good. And that's nice to see because again, I thought that Ford was kind of the leader with that in years past. And clearly FCA has sort of stepped things up with their programming and made it quite a bit better. One other feature here with the 
Ram 1500 Limited trim in particular is that you get these 22 inch wheels. This truck has the black appearance package, which makes everything black on black on black on black. But even if you don't get that, you get the same wheels in a different finish that's more kind of a polished silver look. And I really have to say I don't love the 22 inch wheels. I think it's almost enough to turn me off from the limited trim altogether. And I'll tell you why, there's two reasons. One is that they have very little sidewall and there is no tire sidewall protecting the wheel. And I learned that firsthand last night, I was turning the truck around on a somewhat tight street, thought I had it totally in the bag, and I curbed the hell out of the front right wheel. I'm really, really sorry, FCA. Um, already reached out to the fleet company to you know take care of that. But in any case, I have never done that with any truck or large SUV I've driven, and I felt horrible. But looking at the wheel and tire again, there's just no protection from the tire. And with a truck, that seems like something that you really would want. So kind of disappointed there. The other thing, with the 22s is, you know, with that big wheel, it means you don't have much of a sidewall. And regardless of the, the curb protection from people like me who are driving the trucks into curbs, um, I think it affects the ride quality. I think it really affects the ride quality when towing. There's just not a lot of sidewall to absorb a lot of bumps and potholes and things. And especially when you're towing, it kind of upsets the chassis a little bit and makes the trailer want to control the truck. Not for very long, it's not disconcerting at all, but it's just one of those things that feels a little not quite right. And I really wonder if, say, a Laramie trim with the 20 inch wheels and a bigger tire would perform better in the same scenario. All right, now we've got a long on ramp here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of juice. Oh, geez. Oh, my foot's hard down. Okay, there's 60. So this is where that torque comes into play and that lack of horsepower is more apparent. That was a, an on-ramp that kind of came down and then started going right back up a hill. And this truck is relying all on boost and torque to get us up that hill with the trailer hooked up. Uh, you're not gonna win a drag race in this. The impressive thing with this Eco Diesel is that the computer claims I'm averaging 14 to 15 miles per gallon with the trailer behind me. That's really, really great. Like I said earlier, this engine is rated for 30 32 miles a gallon on the highway, 22 around town, both of those figures unloaded. But this same trailer with my 5.7 liter Hemi powered truck will return about nine or 10 miles a gallon at most. All right, and that is the 2020 Ram 1500 Limited. Thank you so much for coming along on our Eco Diesel towing journey. We really appreciate the support. So if you like this video and like what we're up to, please take a second and subscribe right here on YouTube. Like I said, we will have a whole bunch of footage from our $1,500 Grandma Car Rallycross Challenge coming in about a week. So keep your eye out for that. Beyond that, you can also give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram and find a full written review of this truck on outmotorsports.com. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, be safe, stay well, and we'll see you again soon.